um, Magnus Bicknes from uh, the National Library of Norway, representing the Norwegian Language Bank. The Norwegian Language Bank is a Clarion and C Center. For those of you who know Clarion, Clarion is the European Research uh, Infrastructure Consortium, and we are a C Center uh, in that infrastructure. We at the Norwegian Language Bank, which is part of the Norwegian National uh, National Library of Norway. Uh, the Norwegian Language Bank is uh, the Norwegian infrastructure for language technology, and uh, its primary aim is to provide open language resources for language technology companies as well as researchers. So uh, being part uh, of the National Library, uh, many of our resources that we present in our research, the resource catalog are created from uh, the digital resources at the library. So we have lots of uh, books, newspapers, uh, speech and other media due to a very ambitious digitization project, uh, which has lasted for more than 15 years. So we have, for example, uh, in our collections, more than 600,000 Norwegian books, 4 million uh, newspapers, and a lot of other media. The Norwegian Language Bank uh, hosts a resource catalog of 30, uh, 73 language resources, primarily for Norwegian. So Norwegian, as uh, you may know, is a very small language. Uh, and uh, in order for Norwegian to survive uh, in a digital society, we need uh, quality, high quality language resources. And not so many people uh, will make these resources for us. We need a Norwegian uh, state funded institution to do this kind of work so that other companies can, can uh, make use of these resources. That's the idea. And our main product, so to speak, uh, is our resource catalog, which you see here. So this is a screenshot of, uh, of our resource catalog, which is, as I said, part of, uh, of Clarin. And uh, here we host various language technology resources like corpora, tools, uh, and also services. I'm going to talk about three uh, resource, resources that we currently uh, uh, currently have available in our resource catalog and one resource that we will um, pretty soon be offering in our research catalog. The first resource um, which I want to talk about is the Norwegian Parliamentary Speech Corpus. So this is an open source data set uh, created for the purpose of automatic speech recognition or an ASR and it consists of audio recordings of meetings from the Norwegian parliament and uh, with corresponding orthographic transcriptions in the two variants of Norwegian. So some of you might know that there are two variants of Norwegian, Norwegian bokmål and Norwegian nynorsk uh, and nynorsk is somewhat, it's, it's, it's smaller uh, or less used than Norwegian bookmall, both are official uh, variants of Norwegian, or even now actually no, a title Norwegian languages or categorized as Norwegian languages. Um, in addition to these transcriptions and audio recordings, we have metadata about the speakers. So it's uh, we have 267 uh, unique speakers in this whole corpus. And the corpus consists of 140 hours of running speech, including pauses. And this uh, sums up to 65,000 sentences or, or one or a bit over a million words. Um, the corpus was created using automatic methods. So we had automatic transcription, and then uh, the transcription was manually checked and corrected by trained uh, linguists, linguists. And on top of this corpus, for example, the AI lab, at the, which is another part of the National Library of Norway, created a very good Bob to Vec uh, automatic speech recognition model trained uh, on this corpus. And uh, the, the first results of this uh, of the usage of this model is very, very promising. So uh, that's great. Another research that we, uh, another resource that we, we offer in our research catalog is the so-called MoFrid corpus. That's a, this is a huge um, corpus consisting of, this is a crawling, was a crawling project, web crawling project, where we uh, did a focused 
a deep crawl of about 350 Norwegian public entity domains. So uh, in Norway, because we have this language situation with two uh, standard languages, two official, officially, official variants of Norwegian, there is this law uh, demanding that uh, they be uh, that there be at, at least twenty five percent coverage, or at least that the information material provided in at least twenty five percent of each of the two languages. So they should be uh, represented in official documents. And in earlier times, this was reported manually, and. Uh, in a project uh, conducted by the National Library of Norway, we uh, started using crawling for that purpose and then uh, language uh, or text extraction and then language classification. So we could uh, at least to a certain point automatize this process. But as a byproduct of this uh, pipeline, we also have a corpus of texts. So uh, what we did when we, when we did this crawl was that we, we were only interested in, uh, at least uh, for the time being, we were interested in text documents. So we only crawled uh, HTML, we only downloaded HTML, PDF, and, and uh, Word and ODT documents. And then we did applied various um, uh, text extraction methods according to the format. So for HTML, for example, we did boilerplate removal using um, a program called UseText, which is uh, created by some Czech uh, compu uh, computational linguists. And it's a, it's a very great package where we, so we, what it basically does is that it, it takes an HTML document and then it returns the, well, the sentences within this document. So it, it will, it omits headers, footers, and repeating information, navigational elements, for example, and uh, uses various measures in order to do that. For example, uh, depending on the tags uh, being used, or for example, uh, more, well, uh, Linguist, uh, linguistic measures of such, such, such as uh, stop word density. For the for other documents, we did uh, use, uh, of course, uh, other methods. So for the PDF, for example, uh, part of the of the corpus, we did a full OCR. So we did uh, we used Google Cloud Vision uh, for that uh, purpose. For uh, it was about five hundred thousand PDFs, so it's uh, quite a lot. Um, and for the remaining part, the, the Word documents and the ODT documents, we did we had simply used Python's extract package, which also worked quite well. And then we ended up with a bunch of, uh, of texts and words, so five, four billion tokens in total, uh, and obviously mostly in, in Norwegian, but also some hundred million words in English, for example, but that's... Uh, that's not much for English, but 4 billion word tokens for Norwegian, that's, that's quite a lot. And this corpus, because it's uh, we crawl publicly available public entity websites from Norwegian state institutions, uh, we provide uh, pretty much everything uh, for download. We did some, uh, of course, uh, measures, uh, excluded certain problematic uh, domains, uh, checked for uh, sensitive material in uh, at least, um, yeah. Uh, and then we uh, dumped it as JSON-L, so we can download it in our resource catalog. And now for the final resource that we are not offering as part of our resource catalog as of now, but which we will be offering in the, in the, far, in the, in the, in the, in the future, uh, in, some months or something. Uh, we have this great text corpus uh, created by the AI lab at the, at the National Library of Norway for training large language models like, like BERT. And the free part of this corpus, obviously they, they used pretty much everything that was digitized. They did lots of cleaning and, and, and so on and so forth. But one, the, there is one part of this corpus which is provided uh, by a hugging face uh, for for use in for training uh, large language models, so it's a sub part of the, the whole National Library corpus, uh, consisting of well more freely available texts, so texts out of copyright or texts where the copyright uh, where where the stakeholders have uh, well uh, put it in the in the public domain, 
and also government documents and public re uh, reports. And this is about 7 billion words in both variants of, of Norwegian. And it was used for training uh, the largest NB-BERT uh, model for Norwegian. And the corpus is licensed under uh, Creative Commons uh, CC BY, uh, share alike. Um, and some of the subparts of the corpus are under other licenses, but they're compatible with this uh, umbrella license. license. And then, as extended part of the language bank, uh, we have a DH lab at the National Library of Norway, where we offer services more generally for digital humanities research and for everyone uh, interested in, in, uh, in using well, computational methods on, 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 on texts. So we built a platform for uh, Research infrastructure for um, for text uh, based research on the digital collections of the National Library of Norway. So we provide a REST API for developers, where you can do corpus building. You can get frequency lists, concordances, collocations. You can do topic modeling on practically all texts of the National Library of Norway. But we only we don't provide the full texts, obviously. So you only get uh, limited. Uh, snippets, or concordances, um, the frequency lists, and you don't, you, don't, you never get to see the full text uh, unless it's uh, public domain, obviously. But because not all uh, people in the DH field are programmers, we also op offer web apps on top of the API. So we use, we have uh, some very positive experience now with Python Streamlit apps. Um, and we've made uh, a couple of so general, um, general purpose apps for for uh, for concordi concordancing, uh, building collocations, and so on. And we also have a an ngram viewer similar to the Google Books ngram viewer, which you might know uh, for the for the National Library collection. And then we also provide uh, courses and notebooks, Jupyter notebooks for the somewhat more advanced people. And then obviously the, the most advanced people can just use our uh, REST API. We're also into uh, uh, OCR and especially uh, HTR of older um, documents. So we provide uh, full text search and models for older manuscripts and, uh, and handwritten documents. That was really all I wanted to say. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have time for a few questions or for any other announcement or business. Uh, I, just uh, on, on your last slide, I was wondering um, how you process HCR. Maybe you could explain yes. a little bit. OK, so uh, we use uh, Transcribus for that purpose. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our team has also made uh, uh, models for for uh, a general model and also specific models for for specific Norwegian authors. Yeah. Okay. And is it as as uh, as developed as OCR or is it still experimental? It's you know? it's, uh, it's definitely getting there. It's yeah. probably not uh, as uh, as of now, but it's it's it really has been an, an extreme improvement there in the in the later years. Yes. So. That would be a matter for uh, another call, an entire call about this subject. I think we absolutely maybe yeah, it yeah. could be uh, interesting. I guess uh, Andy, Andy could say a uh, lot more about that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So th we have a question by Peter Leonard. So if you want to ask yes. your question or put it in the chat as you like. Yeah, just a quick question for Magnus. Yeah. Thanks for that great talk. You talked about, of course, Nienorsk and Bookmall, but I'm wondering mm -hmm. also in terms of these very important 19th century Norwegian writers like Ibsen, they're published in Denmark. The written language is basically Danish. How far do you guys go back in treating this kind of linguistic change, especially for sort of really important authors like uh, Ibsen? That's, that's a very good question. And actually, we're, we're, we're not very good at that at present. So we uh, obviously we have lots of lots of materials from from the from the twentieth century, 
and not so much from the 19th century. And then when comparing surface forms, obviously uh, we can't use the modern, uh, the modern forms, but we are actually now, uh, uh, we are uh, creating a, so we, we're creating a parallel corpus mm -hmm. of older variants of also the originals, Henry Gibson originals, and then modernized versions from the 20th and 20th and 21st right. century. And then we're using, for example, um, SBIRT uh, mm -hmm. in order to parallel, parallelize these sentences. And then we create a mapping. So we create a dictionary uh, um, of, well, older and modern word forms. And then we can really start applying the same methods on these original Ibsen texts. So this is something that's in the pipeline. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, uh, I I saw one in, in the document, uh, it was a question for, yes, that, that's also another one for Magnus. Could you give a few examples of simple text anal analysis of newspapers, books, serials performed using the Netherlands apps? Thank you. That's a question that is in the... In okay, the I, 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 can, I just need to... Let me you can put see the link it. again in, in the... Yeah. In, Okay, so there's a problem with the link. Sorry. Okay, so. Good one. And the so question. What you could, I, I, I don't have a, a, a demo right now, but unfortunately, but I can I can post a link to our um, to the to the page where we have uh, we have an well an app menu where you can try out the apps. Most of them are unfortunately in Norwegian. <laughs> uh, so, but we. But we're in the so because most of our users of the platform, in order, I mean, in order to 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 work with the texts, you you have to obviously understand some some Norwegian. But we are in the process of also translating the apps because we are aware of all the people interested. So I, it, it, uh, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate them. But what what you what you do get, for example, for the concordances, obviously, you can't get that much context uh, for uh, copyrighted works. So what we do now is that we limit the concordances to 12 words before and 12 words after the, the hit. Uh, and concordances can never span paragraphs, for example, in order to make it a bit more uh, tedious to, or, uh, to, to reconstruct the, the whole work. That shouldn't be possible, really, or at, le at least it shouldn't be very much easier than just copying the book. Um, and for the collocations, obviously, we can use a larger window because the, the full text itself is not exposed. Uh, yes.